Tyler is an insecure jerkwad. Words were exchanged. Teenagers have to deal with a lot, and Disney's Pixar new movie Turning Red did a really great job exploring and explaining a young girl's adolescence in a fun and lovingly awkward way. Even though the message of the movie is pretty understandable, there are a few questions left that definitely need to be answered. Be aware of spoilers if you haven't watched the movie yet. I didn't mean that. I'm a gross red monster! <laughs> As it was already mentioned, teenagers have a lot to deal with, and two really crazy things happened to 13-year-old girl Mi when her mom, Ming, found the drawings of her daughter's crush. The worst thing happened when Ming confronted the guy who actually doesn't know about her existence. We all sympathize with her because we all probably had moments where we felt like our parents had invaded our privacy, but we didn't wake up the next day as a huge red panda. It turns out that all the women in Mi's family have dealt with it for centuries, but is it some kind of a Curse? Well, Mi's mother explains that she can think of it the way she wants. Whether her transformation is a blessing or a curse, she has to accept it. This red panda transformation originated hundreds of years ago during wartime, and the gods gave her the ability to transform into one to protect them. Since that time, all female descendants inherit the ability to turn into a red panda when they experience intense emotions. Of course, the giant red panda is an allegory for puberty, and it is really cool that the filmmakers came up with this story. Oh yeah, that's the stuff. OMG! <laughs> Red pandas are absolutely adorable, and all viewers, just like Mi's classmates, definitely fell in love with Mi when she turned into a fluffy red panda. The animated movie director, Domi Shi, told the New York Times that the animal's cuteness was one of her biggest reasons why they decided to transform Mi into a red panda. I wanted Mi to go through a magical puberty transformation, and I couldn't get the image of a red panda out of my head because it's so cute and funny, especially if you blow it up to like 8 feet tall, she said. There's something about the color too. Red represents your period. It represents being angry, being embarrassed, or being very lustful for someone. However, many fans were wondering if red pandas have any ties with the Chinese mythology, and it was also one of the reasons why the director chose the red panda in part. I think we wanted the space and the room to come up with a whole legend and a mythology, she told the insider. Even though the red panda is native to China, it doesn't have a Chinese myth background, which gives the filmmakers to stand on their own and be free from cliche and traditions. I'm keeping it. What did she say? Keeping it? I'm keeping it! Mimi, stop it! What are you doing? No! When Mi first transforms into a red panda, Ming is pretty sure she's gotten her period, but this is not exactly like that. Mi's panda image mostly represents her daughter's adult personality. Panda is energetic, funny, and definitely bold, but Ming and generations before her don't think it's okay. Ming's plan is to change her daughter and frame her and turn her into a perfect little lady. She wants her daughter to lock her panda as soon as possible. So, as you may understand now, the red panda doesn't just represent the menstrual cycle. It represents women's full, complex humanity. The fact that Ming sealed her panda inside her is also a huge metaphor that shows the way that many women have been shrunk by the world. The world expects women to be nice, sweet, and helpful, but never weird, angry, or crass. This is so cool that Mi was the one who didn't want to hide her real self, and she showed everyone that that you have to accept yourself and never hide your real personality. Each time you do, the stronger it gets. And then you'll be bound to it forever, and the ritual will fail. When you first meet Ming, she seems like the ruling and very powerful woman, at least in Mi's life. And it was probably the reason why Mi and her friends refer to Ming as the Empress when they make up a plan to make money for concert tickets. But everything changes when Wu, Min's mother, and Mi's grandma appears. Did you notice how Ming acts when Wu calls her? She transforms into a little girl again and asks her husband to say she's not there. But there's nothing impossible for an old lady's mom. Mafia's Wu arrives in Toronto along with her ladies looking like a squad of mobsters decked out in dark sunglasses. Wu knows Mi's red panda spirit has emerged mere hours after Ming does. She was definitely watching footage of panda Mi running across Toronto's rooftops while expertly tweezing her eyebrows. Don't even ask how she managed to get across the recording, she is a real mafia. It seems like Wu and the aunties really know a lot and there's no way that Ming or Mi can hide something from them. We're pretty sure you wouldn't be surprised to know that Wu has entered international contacts all around the world, right? The icing on the cake is the fact that the film's ending reveals Sun Yi herself to be the regal old woman. You'll probably agree that even though the movie is all about me, but who really runs the world is definitely grandma. I'm sorry. 
So don't hold back for anyone. Mi literally breaks her family tradition when she decides not to lock her red panda spirit away. She kind of breaks a generational cycle, one that deeply affected her mother Ming. However, it's weird that her mother doesn't understand that Mi didn't throw her family's legacy entirely out the window. In fact, her choice puts her right in line with the generations of women who kept their red panda spirits squarely in their bodies before her family immigrated to Canada. Ming doesn't really realize it, but she repeats her mother's mistake with her own daughter. Why? When Ming was a teenager, she started dating Mi's father, but her mom disapproved of it and she unleashed her panda. This is exactly what Ming did to Mi. Plus, Ming attacked her daughter in public and destroyed the stadium, and Mi also confronts her mom back, and their fight became some kind of a catharsis for Mi and partly as a distraction to get the ritual going again. This argument also led to a very powerful moment that wouldn't have happened if the mom and daughter didn't start it. It was a really transforming moment for Ming and Mi when Mi found her mom in the ritual dimension being a 13-year-old girl who wanted to explain to me that she was a little girl as well, just like her and she was terrified of disappointing her own mom. The two had a really emotional heart-to-heart -heart talk and Mi then said she respected Ming's choice to hide her panda, but at the same time she explained that she had another choice. So the entire conflict was just made to make both of them understand the importance of accepting each other's choices. Guys, I can't be like this forever. My whole family would freak especially my mom. Who said Turning Red was made for kids only? There are so many millennials who really adored this animated movie, and one of the biggest reasons is that the filmmakers never lose an opportunity to remind you that the movie is taking place in 2002. How many 2000s things have you noticed in the movie so far? Leave your list in the comment section down below. As for us, we definitely remember Mi's chirping Tamagotchi and Chunky Nakia. Oh, sorry, joke yeah. Phones her friends, uses to text each other crucial panda updates, and of course, 4Town gives us the biggest Y2K era ever. Remember those baggy jeans and rhythmic hand claps that were so popular in the 2000s? If you're a millennial, of course. And of course, there are so many of The Simpsons and Twilight Easter eggs. We really want to know if you notice them. The way the filmmakers recreated the O's made all of the millennials re-examine their own use. According to the director of the movie, she said that that was the plan, to get into this demographic. Speaking with Al Canada, she revealed that she drew on her own two decade old memories of middle school for the movie. And it's safe to say that the public was absolutely hungry for remembrances of the O's. Gotta get home! Gotta hide! Have we answered all of the questions that you were interested in? If not, you can leave your question in the comment section down below and we'll answer it. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye! Go away! That was you in the bathroom! I didn't imagine it! Yeah!